<laughs> hey, welcome to the Spuddle... The Spuddle Butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long since I said that word. Yes. The Scuttle Butt Podcast, I'm Rich. And I'm Sandy. And uh, it's been a minute since we chatted with y'all. We were just talking about that the other day, and I think, well... I didn't realize it had been this long, honest to God, I didn't. And all of a sudden, when I go back and, and through in that, it's been a year and a half. Yeah. Our last podcast was six days before I had my hip surgery done. Well, yeah. So that was the end of March, actually March 31st to be exact. And I think we probably mentioned to you the whole how, how we got there to, uh, to actually go for a private surgery in Montreal. But um, we, we did have a very successful, we, you had a very successful surgery. Um, and then we came home and he recovered very nicely. Uh, I didn't have to nag a whole lot about getting him up off the couch. I think you had to be active for 10 minutes every hour yeah. while you were in your waking hours. But you should say, like, right after your surgery, just what, what was that like? Well, it was remarkable. A uh, couple things were really cool. <laughs> uh, I came to, I had a spinal. Uh, which is a type of, uh, of, of anesthetic. So rather than a general anesthetic, which is a paralytic, uh, which can, has its own problems and it's harder to recover from. I guess a lot of people get sick from it. Mm. Um, so anyway, they, they did what, what's called a spinal. And, and during the spinal, because they go in and they, and they go in to your vertebrae and they, they put a block in. They either they, they freeze it, inject it, and, mm -hmm. and put a block in. They discovered... Uh, you've got these holes that go through your, your vertebrae that other other things run through, I guess. <laughs> anyway, at some point, I had broke my back. I had broke the, the uh, your, your vertebrae has fins on it, once again, to, to, for channels, for, for muscles and tendons and that kind of stuff to run in and all that stuff. But I had broke some of these fins and folded it over the hole that they, that they access. Oh. And so they had to go up a little bit. So I, was, I got... Uh, uh, done a little bit higher on my, my spinal, but I think I actually bled more from the spinal than I, <laughs> than I did from the surgery. But so once once they do that, they, they put that block in you, you you know you don't feel anything, and then you have the option of being awake for it. And I says no, I said I, I think you better put me to sleep because I know myself that if you uh, uh, if I feel you move me around or whatever, I'm going to tense. I'm going to fight against that that motion. I, I won't be able to stop it. And they said, but you won't be able to move below. And I said, yeah, but I said, move up above. And that's, that's enough. So <laughs> they give you a little, uh, a little shot of, I don't know, whatever it is. And you go, pink. And, <laughs> and, then, and then next thing I go, click, I come back, come back up. And they're, they stick these pains to you that they, it's like got glue around the outside. And then there's this saran wrap, for a better word, I don't know, saran wrap that they cut and they, and they operate through. It's mm -hmm. to keep everything clean so nothing will fall in and all that. So as they're pulling that off of me in the um, operating room, I come to. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty fascinating because uh, uh, I asked the doctor if I could see my hip. All the parts they removed. Yeah. Most people wouldn't want that visual. Ah, I have been inside so many animals, I know exactly what I look like inside. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he brought over the, they, they take and they cut off the ball off your, uh, off your, uh, your thigh bone. So that, that ball goes into a socket or catcher's mitt or whatever you want to call it. That's what makes up your, uh, up your hip and how, how the motion goes. Uh, I expected to see like a flat spot or whatever and that, but there was this, I don't know, it's like an inch and a half, inch, three quarter inch round ball. That's your the hip yeah. ball. And there's a, a patch that goes right over the top and down. And it's like if you laid a bandage, you know, from halfway on the ball on each side, right over the top, uh, you know, like a three-eighths or half-inch wide bandage. And, and it's wore flat. Yeah. And when you got to the top of it, it's wore so flat. Like, I mean, you have that, that shiny um, cartilage or, or whatever the, those, that, that shiny um, uh coating is that, that, that you see on any hip joint or, or ball joint in, in animals, everything, right? It's wore through that and it's wore into the bone. And at the top, it's wore in so far into the bone that you have actually have blood spots where 
it's uh, now down to the porosity of the bone. Now that in itself has no pain. Right. It's what what is wore out of there when it migrates out and gets it inflames yeah. the tissue and that around. That's where that's where all the pain comes from. But remarkably, they had to add three millimeters to my leg. Yep. That's and they gave you a hip alignment or a, a wheel alignment. Yeah. I like to say. <laughs> you normally he would walk with his toes out, and then his left one pointed straight ahead. So it was like that took a little bit of time to. Well, my, my body won on that again, though, yeah. because now I'm back to this. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> but they said they, they have to, uh, you know, they have to put everything back to anatomically correct. And, and so they had to lengthen my leg. And, you know, that's really weird, too, because you have no idea how spatially aware you are when you walk. Yeah. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I stumbled on, on stairs because my leg was three millimeters longer, or when you'd be walking on a, down a gravel road and yeah. just, you, you have no idea how close your foot is to the ground and how aware it is, you, your body is. And, yeah. and it took quite a bit of time to get used to that. But uh, when I woke up, I saw that. I texted you as soon as it got me back to the, to the bed and I texted you and I thought I was functioned pretty good. I looked at the text afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it did not, it didn't even make sense. <laughs> it was hilarious. But I, I, I remember texting you, yep, send. You know, I was like. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> it was cornless a skyrocket eyes. or something like that. <laughs> but in Montreal, so we had a, had, had a choice of going either to Toronto or Montreal. So Montreal, he spent, he had the surgery at about 11 o'clock. Um, and it was on a Friday. Mm -hmm. And he could stay one extra day and was discharged at about, seven o'clock in the morning or thereabouts on Sunday and then we spent an extra day at the hotel which was probably the wrong thing um, and then flew home the following day on the Tuesday but I was walking yeah uh, at one o'clock 1 30 yeah oh yeah they I had was you up and walking yeah but but you said that the pain your your hip pain I mean, the surgical pain was there and the incision and all of that, but the hip pain. I don't know if anybody's, you know, if, if you've had surgery before, for me, it's always where the cut is or whatever. It's just kind of pinchy. Yeah. It's not like this mag, this hugely magnified pain, this throbbing or anything. It's just kind of pinchy. Yep. And um, for me, the fact that my hip pain was gone, Yeah. that was something I'd lived with for... for Way longer than you thought. I hadn't been even sleeping in, the, in our bed for no. for a long time because no the recliner was yep where and that had been only just the, the last few months but anyway the um, the whole experience was way different than than what you see um, I think when you go and have a, a surgical event in a in a hospital setting um, it was kind of cool to be a customer. Yeah, and um, that's exactly how we would describe it, right? Like they yeah. were, yeah. Being, Any, ab being able to book a hip replacement like you would uh, yeah. changing oil in your truck and it was, was about thirty remarkable. Day, thirty days. Uh, you had to have it paid for uh, in full thirty days prior to the surgery. The part that got me, I mean, it's, I didn't find that the surgery was that expensive. It was what twenty six thousand yeah. dollars or something like that. Plus GST. The GST <laughs> part. So Trudeau has a goods and services tax, sales tax is what it is, on stuff that isn't, um, isn't uh, like... Isn't food. Well, yeah, food. <laughs> like, so, so like, what is that? Like a staple of life kind of thing. And I would have thought, you know, I mean, if I was having my teeth done or, or getting a boob job or something, <gasps> I, could see, I could see paying GST on that. But a hip? Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. There, there's some things that are just ludicrous about the whole thing. However, we got home in good time. Uh, probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I mean, we we propped him up in the in the back. I laid down the seats in my my SUV, and I propped him up with a pillow in the back, and we just zoomed for home because we flew into Edmonton, yeah. um, and. The, your choices for air travel from between Edmonton and Grand Prairie are, are limited. Yeah. And what is available are very small planes, which would have been 
faster maybe than getting here by car, but a, a lot less comfortable for you. So we did that yep. and we had everything all set up prior, prior to leaving. You thought it was hilarious when we got home. We got, she, she goes and rents me a little rascal, she calls it. So it's <laughs> one of those walkers with wheels, you with know. With wheels on it. And, and a handbrake and... and, <laughs> and so he didn't get like run away yeah. down the hill. <laughs> well, because everything out here in, uh, on the farm is gravel roads. And so to take an actual walker, I mean, you're supposed to, that was the one thing the doctor beat into my head. He says, you can walk, you can do this, you can do that. But he says, fall, he says, you break that. He says, I don't know that I can fix it. It's like, scared the heck out of me. So first time and in my life. And this was the end of March. So yeah. you, you got to remember that you're dealing with a lot of um, uh, often unexpected weather up in this area. You can't count on it just to be a thaw and then to go. But that little rascal helped and, um, you know, you, you were steady on the walking and getting going and whatnot. And, I, and would, I was doing four or 5,000 steps a day when I got home yeah. and up to eight, ten, twelve thousand. 12,000. I mean, I, I do the, the normal amount now. I'm pretty much recovered. Uh, I have one issue, and it's the scar tissue from the, the fascia. There's two. There's the, the scar tissue on the skin and the scar tissue on the fascia, on the, um, which controls the muscle. And it's because I don't have a lot of butt. Uh, and so that scar tissue rubs across where uh, the hip joint is where your, your uh, nerves and that come down your back and then they cross, some, some of them cross at, at your hip joint and go down the inside of your leg to your knee and that kind of stuff. So I have a little bit of problem there, but we're working through it. I've I'm, I'm, uh, been having some um, plasma plasma injections and uh, doing some, some physio. I, yep. I still, I'm a million times better than I was. And uh, I mean, if this is as good as it ever gets, I, I can live with it. I, yeah. I, I'm getting on. Yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, that we just, you never know what recovery is going to be like. It's different for everyone. Uh, but you were, you were very determined that it wasn't going to keep you down. Now that you had the new hip, it was like, it's like new tires on the car. So <laughs> we, away we went. We, we had decided, and uh, we talked about it a little bit. And if you watch the episodes uh, nine and, or uh, seasons nine and 10, that's how long this has been, a year and a half. Um, no, I guess just 10. Just episode 10, what would be? Season 10, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Season 10. Yeah, because we, we would have started filming yeah, that we, fall. We decided that we were going to do more of the homesteading. We we're going to show more of our, our homesteading lifestyle. Uh, more of the, the ducks, pigs, chickens, turkeys, and, you know, our, our wild meat, wild game, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, uh, we were getting back into pigs. And we... <laughs> Uh, it's been a very long time since we had anything to do with that, and, and it kind of morphed from being hands-on with pigs to buying them from farmers. And, but somewhere along the line, we lost contact with that actual grassroots uh, product uh, of pigs and that. You know, for when Grand Prairie was much smaller, Grand Prairie's the, the, the big city we live next to. Big city. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy or 80,000 people, whatever. But they, it's they, big compared to what it was. Well, yeah, but when... when when we were first married, which is going back how many years ago now, honey? It's 45 this year. 45 years this year. But, you know, like the local co-op had pigs that were growing at the local farmer, you know, yeah. and, and so you, you had that natural, that good organic natural food. And, and uh, so when we got back into it, we had to reestablish a place to get piglets because I yeah. wasn't going to have a boar and a sow around anyway. And yeah. we had to build um, uh, an enclosure for them. So, and the and the we part of that turned out to be Jake and Marissa, yes. our son and his wife, because yeah. um, Richard just wasn't in any any shape after the surgery, even though he was recovering well and quickly. As a whole different set of of uh, physical requirements when you're running machinery in and out, driving posts, stringing well, that was, wire and all of that. That was a couple of things that I had problems with was mm -hmm. like running a machine, a skid steer, sitting in that bucket seat or on a quad. Yeah. That, that, that sitting in, uh, was, would cause me pain. And so listening to my doctor, I was adverse to pain. So 
we had uh, an area that uh, we had mapped out, and uh, I, I got my uh, I have a skid steer. I rented a uh, hydraulic post pounder, and the kids went out and pounded posts. Yeah. Uh, so Jake and Marissa went out and, and pounded posts, and then uh, I wanted to build a plank fence. And yeah. they said, "Oh no, no, there's this wire, and it's and it's so much cheaper and all that." And it was like, "Okay, yeah, I could I could do that." And meanwhile, I'm I'm busy trying to finish up the season, right? I'm trying to fit, get get the last of my editing done, and and so they get this wire, and it's three feet or forty two inches tall, something like that. And one thing I didn't realize, um, having never built a pig fence before, and because I was going to build a pig fence that was solid plank, was that it had little narrow. Uh, pan, uh, like six inch by three inch uh, panels on what I took to be the top, but they took to be the top, and then down below were six inch by six inch by six inch. <laughs> that was wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the little ones are supposed to be on the bottom, and we'll tell you why that's important. If some of you that have done this whole thing with pigs might already know. You're laughing. <laughs> You're laughing already. You're laughing at us. So they built it that way, and I go out there, and I, and I mean I'm. I'm very particular about how I build stuff, and I'm very particular about about what I call good enough. And at some point, uh, you'll see, uh, when we, when we're raising pheasants too. You'll see my, my pheasant uh, flight pens and all that. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, we go out there, and uh, I said, you're sure this is going to do? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Marissa's cousin, cousin has pigs. Yeah. Yeah. The thing we didn't know about was the cousin has, uh, in the pig pen, has electric fence. Yeah, and we didn't elect to go that route. No. This, this time. <laughs> Probably rethinking that now. Anyway, um, we, got, uh, we got some piglets from a friend of ours, and uh, we got f four of them. Yep. And on a drizzly, I think it was in July, that we got them. Late June. Late June, yeah, early was, July, yeah, something June. like that. It was June, yeah. Anyway, it was drizzly, it was cold, and uh, Jake was working, and so, and, and it was on a Sunday. So Marissa and the two kids, and Richard and I, got, the, got one of the dog kettles, kennels <laughs> together, <laughs> and we went out and picked up these four little pigs, all females, yep. gu gilts, I so guess. Is that what they call? I think they are. I'm not. I don't know. Um, I figured it a good but one. I'm just. I I believe that's. The, but they were just wieners, so they're about 15 pounds. Yeah. Not big, um, and we started to film on one of the record at least on one of our phones <laughs> what this is going to be like and Richard picks the first one up and he puts it in and we're busy talking and this first little pig just goes whoop and <laughs> gone and Nathaniel our grandson he's standing there going grandpa the pig it just left and you know you couldn't even see the the grass like it was gone yeah it was tall the grass was very the, tall the grass was tall at that point and it was gone and so we're well this isn't going to work <laughs> so uh we quickly hatched a plan and marissa's horse trailer was in the yard so we put some straw in the horse trailer and some food and water and put the other three little pigs into the horse trailer and we thought okay uh i don't know what's going to happen hopefully the other little pig comes back but they just i mean they had hardly breathed the air for five minutes and <laughs> and suddenly we're we're making wholesale changes to how we're going to run this operation <laughs> and running an operation is really sort of an overstatement uh, because confess, we just kind of ping-ponged from <laughs> One I'll confess crisis. I didn't take it well because <laughs> there's, there, there's two ways to build things, my way and the wrong way. And <laughs> <laughs> so it was built the wrong way, but okay. So we got them in there and we thought, what do we do now? And then Jake and Marissa got some, we had some 2 by 10s and 2 by 8s and whatnot around the yard. So. Oh no, you're, you're skipping. Oh, am I skipping? skipping? What are yeah. we doing? Well, we put them into the into, in, the, horse trailer. into the horse trailer, and then uh, so we, we we just got one one missing, and that was on a oh that was Sunday afternoon that was Sunday, and yes. then Monday night because we're worried now about this pig is and, this, is and I kept calling Richard from work saying any sign of the pig yeah, any sign of the pig yeah. and he's like no 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 so. <laughs> 
We, I get home and still no sign of the pigs, so I get changed out of my work clothes and I'm standing in the kitchen and I'm, I fed, my, I fed the dogs and then as I usually do, I let them out. And so I was doing something else at the kitchen sink and Richard starts hollering, the pigs, the pig, the pig, the pig, get the dogs. The pig is out in the yard and the dogs are chasing the pig. <laughs> And I mean, we have bird dogs. They're GSPs, so they're, they're, it's not like they're trying to attack it or anything, but they're nope, curious as hell. but they've never seen yeah. <laughs> a little pig before, so this is all news to them. So uh, I go ripping out the door out of the kitchen uh, with no shoes on. Richard goes thundering down the stairs, managed to get one shoe on, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes out the basement door and I, and so we meet at the front of the house and the dogs, I've got them in the house by then, but the pig is kind of cowering in the corner by our water, our hose bib. Yep. Yeah. There's out in the front of the there, house. Corner there between the house and the, yeah. and the, the deck. Uh, so there she is. And at least we know where she is. She's, she's there. So there was a lawn chair that had been propped up against the deck on the front of the house. So I grab the lawn chair and Richard starts moving towards her and I start moving this way. He starts moving this way. And finally she thinks I've, everything's too close. I'm going to make a break for it. And luckily you were fast enough to snag her by a back foot, but there he is with one shoe on and <laughs> has this pig who's intent on getting away. And he's standing there like this. <laughs> So then, that's how you hold them by the hind legs. Yeah. Well, it is how you hold them by the hind legs, and absolutely. But anyway, then the horse trailer wasn't very far away, so we got her in there, and we were very relieved that this little pig was back. So that was good. Yeah. And then, um, you was, know, we let the kids know that the pig was back because the the grandchildren were quite concerned what was going to happen to this little pig. That was Monday night, and then yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday, you went to a physio appointment. Yes, and I came home, and I, I noticed the back trailer, back of the uh, doors on the back of the horse trailer are flopping in the wind. We had a big wind come up. But they're flopping in the wind, and it's like, no. So. Out we go. Not sure who, what, why, when, and how. <laughs> but the, the doors weren't latched at the back, yep. and all four of the pigs were gone. Well, I think we both could have just quit right there. I was like, good Lord. It how, was, how, much, how much smarter than us are pigs? Yep. <laughs> Basically. And now people who know pigs or know about pigs are really laughing and pointing fingers at us. And we have red faces. <laughs> and so the next day we came, I came home from work and two days. Oh, was it two days? Two days. And, and we and no hide, no hair no. of these pigs. These, these four little pigs are gone. And, and uh, I took the, uh, uh, my weed eater over to one of my bee yards. And I, you got to keep the grass down around the electric fence or it'll, can, if it rains or whatever, it can short out. And then a bear could walk in into your, into your hive. And so I, I did that. I come back and I <laughs> pulled in front of the one open building there. And here's four little pigs in there. And they're... A, at some point, uh, a pigeon had died in there, and it was the mummified carcass was laying there. <laughs> I'd found it just like a week before when I'd moved a bunch of scaffolding, and here's this mummified, and they're eating it. Yeah. They're eating this mummified carcass. So they had something to keep their attention. So I he you. calls me and said, get out here, the pigs are back. So I go out there in my flip-flops, and... Um, Anyway, we uh, we get the you got you got to set this up correctly. Yeah, you though. do. So you there's they're in the corner of the building. There's a canoe, the old wreck of the Hesperus is laying here. Mm -hmm. Then there's this there's a pile of uh, of tires, winter tires, and in between them there's a little bit of a gap. So I put the big dog kennel in that little bit of a gap. Yeah. And I says, well, now we'll just take and walk towards them and crowd them. I said they're going to shoot into that into that kennel. And it was a perfect plan. It was a great plan. Where three of them went bing, 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 right in there. And then one of them decided that she wasn't so sure that that's where she should be going. So she stood her ground. And if she'd been a bull, I think she probably would have scratched the earth. And Well, I had to go close the, the gate. They hit the, that dog kennel so hard they knocked it back. Right. So now it's out of, it's no longer controlled. And they they, they could have got, got out and got yeah. sideways. So I go run over there and I... And I latch it. Meanwhile, she's 
Go so on. you got to. Yeah, we yeah. have to tell you how it is that we actually <laughs> sort of. So it's a little. It was about a ten foot long piece of one by one fencing that we yeah. used for metal, the metal fence, yep. for the uh, chicken yard. Yep. So uh, now I've got a hold of this thing, and that pig came for me. <laughs> if she'd been bigger, she probably would have eaten me. But I'm moving towards her, and she's having none of it, and she started charging at me, charging at me. And I'm just standing there all by myself, and Richard's <laughs> cheering me on. <laughs> but it was ridiculous. If someone like us who have cameras had thought to put a camera on it, we really would have had a good episode this for you for the TV. No, no. There's never time I know, in reality. But the, but the stories are always good. I mean, <laughs> I go back to work, and if, if I'm gone for a weekend, everybody wants to know what's, what's happened. So... Okay. Now we have we have all four of them. So now we have all four in the dog kennel. And we have, meanwhile, we have pig proofed the the the, the fence. royal we, which would be Jake and Marissa, yeah. who've been out there, and they've they've pig proofed this whole thing. We so, we, but what what were inside was there? I don't remember. Oh, well, they, they they didn't pig proof it tall enough. Oh. So they only put one. Um, like two two by eight or two by ten on no. the bottom, in instead of uh, going up a little higher. So uh, we put the dog kennel in and opened the door of it, and those pigs were in and out of that pen. I can't tell you how many times, and we just stood there and looked at each other, going, well, "Well, I didn't know that keeping pigs was this hard." <laughs> and I think for smart people, or even of average intelligence, it probably isn't. But for us, it was very difficult. So anyway, then they run up into the yard. Well, yeah, we, we have, kind we of three. got them in. Like all four of them were traveling together then, and there's a little bit of a rise that comes up into the yard from where the pig pen is, and they all trotted up there, and they got underneath. The um, dump trailer. The dump trailer, and they just wanted to stay underneath the dump trailer, and right next to the dump trailer on one side was the horse trailer. So Richard thought this is great. We we put some two by tens around, and then he runs to the open building and he gets a boat paddle. Well, I put the two by tens on edge around it, so so they can't get. There's only one way out from underneath that trailer. And from, that was at the back. Yeah. But we couldn't be standing at the back, or they would they wouldn't. So, so he was in the dump trailer, and he hands me a boat paddle and says, "You crawl underneath it with the boat paddle and your flip flops, and in the gravel, and you just chew them to the end." And I'm gonna my, lasso them. In yeah. my defense, I didn't make you wear flip flops. <laughs> N no, I but did, we were all in a hurry, <laughs> and that's my defense, is that we were in a hurry. So it worked, though, for the first two. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm standing there in the, in, <laughs> with well, a, with in a the dump trailer with, it's, with, with a, a rope. No, it's not even a lariat. It's, it's just a, a, rope a, a with soft a loop rope. In it. Yeah. <laughs> and when the first one sticks his head out, I, <laughs> like this, and I just hand over hand and put him in the trailer with me. And then I do down, and I get the next one. And then after that, the, the last two were... Yeah, they went, and we did Never. not see them again for months. But we thought they were gone, and they were either going to be coyote fodder, or they were going to run out or on bear. the highway, I or the bear. Bears. Well, yeah, yeah. they because we do have a sow that lives on the property. They're this big. Yeah, That's they it. weren't. They weren't big. It's not like they can climb a tree or fight back. So, and they, they a... they're speedy. However, <laughs> they are they are speedy. So anyway. We lost track of them. We we had a live trap out. We had food. We had yeah. all the things that, because by then now we've reached out to the experts in in the pig raising community, and this is what they told us as they looked at us sideways like we were <laughs> a bunch of dummies. Anyway, we went we, and bought more pigs. We <laughs> went and bought more pigs, and we had five out there. And it was a really dry year, so you have to remember this first part of July. Yeah. But we, like, we didn't see those little pigs until no. we were out at the trap line yeah, we on were the the um, Remembrance Day long weekend. Yeah. And our daughter-in-law had come out late in the afternoon to feed the pigs, and when she got out of her vehicle, 
She, she walked up to the food yeah. right, right, right at the at the pen, and the one side of the, the pen is backs right into the into the big bush of uh, of the home quarter. So all of a sudden, two, two little in, two black things yeah. come whipping around the corner. No she, one expecting them to be pigs. She thought they were bears. they were bear, yeah. and you know could could very well have been. <laughs> They they <laughs> managed to her. She caught one right away, and, uh, and Jake, Jake, came, Jake out. came out and helped her. And, and they caught the other, and they put them in with the ducks. <laughs> well, because I think it was the right decision. Because by then, the other pigs in the pen were about 160 pounds. They were full brothers and sisters to these two that escaped. They're at the the ones that were raising her at 160 pounds. These aren't 40. Yeah. They after were a, after a summer of of the easiest living as it gets here in the north. They hadn't they hadn't put on thirty. Maybe pounds. they were at a dead run the whole time. I don't, I don't know. I don't anyway, know. put them in the duck pen, um, and and they all lived happily ever after with the ducks. We had to put a little another build another little shelter to put in there yeah. for them and yeah. whatnot. But anyway, that's our story of pigs. And actually, <laughs> we 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 ended up butchering them later in the in into 2024 well none of the experts could tell us if they would ever grow yeah well because yeah. they hadn't started well they were only marginally bigger they were maybe twice the size of what they were yeah. when we got them but they the full full brothers and sisters that were in the pen then already were already 160 pounds so it was like Wow. That, so that is the one thing that we did do right, is we didn't put the little ones in with the big ones, because that would have... They would have killed Everybody them. told us that, that they, they would have yeah. definitely ate them. So we had good instincts on that one. <laughs> there wasn't many good instincts otherwise. But anyway, we did end up butchering the, the original set, plus the ones we had to rebuy, um, right around the new year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And wow, they were... They were good pork. Yeah, they, they were a, uh, a Russian boar and Berkshire cross. Cross. Yeah, and, and then Jake and Marissa had, uh, bought uh, Herefords. A couple of, yeah. I did not know. God's my witness. I didn't know there was a pig, uh, a uh, brand of pig that was Hereford. <laughs> I thought that was only cows, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we uh, we we ended up with five pigs, and uh, and that it, it worked oh. out good. Oh, someone is. Speaking Grumpy. out of turn. Yeah, you be quiet. You lay down. Be good. Yeah, the old, the old, the old guy's still around. Yeah. <laughs> and so then, what was it about May that we did the other ones, right? Um, uh, it was April. Like that. April. April. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we have good pork and, and wonderful pork. It's yeah. it's like some of the other stuff we'll talk about in future podcasts, but you forgot how good that stuff tastes. Yeah. And and to get that connection back to real food big big deal man that's yeah. that is so important well, and that's you know from the from the homesteading part of it like you said right at the very beginning is that you know covid kind of started us on this on this journey i guess because you know food availability and just the ability to do for yourself and we've had a, a garden for a few years out here but We've kept expanding it, and then we added some berry trees. So we've got a, um, we've got some blueberries, and we've got some raspberries, and then we've got some wild, or sorry, um, tart cherries, mm -hmm. and what else? Well, we'll get into that yeah. in the future. Anyway, here. that we had, was part of it. We had another uh, situation happen in May. Yes. May of uh, of last year, and that was we came into a very dry spring, and. The weird part was was that uh, we went into the winter with a deficit. You know how droughts go, right? But of course, in today's world, everything is climate change. Climate change, climate change, climate yeah. change. And so we, we went in with a deficit. We had a very light amount of snow during the winter time, And so there wasn't much runoff. Nothing, nothing filled up too much. But the worst part was is that all of a sudden it was cold. Yeah. You know, here it was uh, in, uh, you know, April and May, mm -hmm. and Jake is, it can't drive posts for, for building the, the pig pen because yeah. of frost, yeah. you know. So you've got, because you didn't have a lot of snow in the wintertime, all that dry grass from the year before hasn't been laid down. So it's all standing. 
So whenever fire started, well, it traveled in that dry grass. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened uh, up at our trap hunt. The, the uh, fire started in the dry grass, traveled alongside the roads, that kind of stuff, and then traveled through the, through the bush. So in the end, uh, about half of our trap hunt burned. Yeah. Some and of it more severely than... Well, any, any it, place but. where there were coniferous, so pine or spruce or whatever, yeah, yeah, that burns hot and that burns. The worst part is that it burns the roots. It burns the roots on the standing trees and then eventually they just fall over. Mm -hmm. And so it was about half of our trap line we haven't been able to see now for over a year because yeah. all the trails are, trees have fell in. Some places it looks like, like a tornado. You know how trees twist up in a tornado? Well, that's what's going on while it was on fire. Yeah. And you know that tornado twists up and it falls over and it, you can you can spend like hours upon hours to go 100 feet. Um, I think I've got it straightened out now with the government on on how I can go in there with a machine and clean yeah. it up. So this this winter we're we're hoping for uh, getting more access to to the rest of the of it. But it was really tough because. Uh, the first place that the fire went was across the roads, so we couldn't even go in. No. We couldn't even go in and try and rescue anything. The one thing that we did have going in our favor, though, was that there is so much oil field activity up there and a lot of um, plants and infrastructure that is uh, still very active in that area. So they were able to bring in a lot of their own firefighting and uh, the the big fire had come around the end of the lake because we thought most of the fire was on the south end of the lake. Uh, kind of the west. Okay. Kind of the west, south, southwest. Yeah. 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 yeah you're not and wrong. so we thought probably we'd be safe, even even though fire, if the wind is right and whatnot, certainly you know burning embers can can travel a long distance, um, but. We thought we'd be safe, and then it came around on the far end. Um, the wind. And, and the wind, like the wind just changed. But in those big fires, it just creates its own it does climate, create its I own, guess. It, yeah, it does create its own climate and its own wind. But you never pay much attention to wind until suddenly you're wondering about whether or not you're in the line of fire. Yeah. And wind changes every day, it changes during the day. And you don't realize, I mean, you go out and the wind's blowing, you walk out to the to the chicken coop and the wind's blowing on your face. You don't even pay any attention to it, and uh, until that nuance becomes so important, whether it's uh, you know 90 degrees to your face or 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 15 degrees to your face, because that's going to determine maybe whether your trap line burns or not. Yeah. It ended up uh, about 280 yards was as close as it got. Surprisingly, yeah. our uh, trap line trails yeah worked really good as fire breaks. Yeah, and but the government or whoever was up there, I think it was probably a combination of industry and government um, people or, or subcontractors pushed a big fire line in and that stopped the fire. Uh, so we were, we felt very fortunate. They, in, the other thing that they had done is they'd gone in with a pump, um, a, gas op, a gas fueled pump and a bunch of sprinklers and they put them around the the yard site where the cabins yeah. are so yeah. that was very helpful to us as well because of course everything is built out of wood out there um all the roofs are tin so that probably helped us to a degree as well but our but cabin is in probably the largest stand of big timber on the yeah, whole trap line exactly so, i mean it would be one of those places the wor worst part was uh, you know, I was in contact with the, the fire marshal that was in charge of, of that area and that fire. And they were bucketing. They like the um, uh, the helicopters and, and the uh, bomber planes and all that were, were taking water out of the lake that our cabin sits on. And we're talking about like our cabin is not 30 yards from the edge of the lake. No. But for about a week and a half, they thought it was gone. But you can imagine when you've got 20 or 30,000 feet of smoke. Yeah, the smoke column was unbelievable. It was so dense. And we did end up getting back in there in like July. Yeah. And it was, oh my goodness, you you didn't know whether there was a fire still close by or not. But the it was damp, like it had been kind of drizzly raining and whatnot, not a, a big dump of, of rain. <clears throat> but it was 
so smoky and you really, mm. you, you couldn't see the other side of the lake. And it's not a very big lake, um, but you couldn't see the other side of it at all. So, I mean, we got in and we, we had to walk quite a ways because you, you just couldn't, that's just done by design is we don't have a road that actually runs in there, but. Well, part of it is uh, um, muskeg burns. Yeah. And when it's dry, like it had been dry, so now all that moss is burning. And it can be pretty creepy, actually, because it might eat away 50, 60 feet underneath the ground, mm -hmm. and you walk along and, and fall through. Or drive through. Or, worse. Or, yeah. Much so worse. So later in the year, by August, yeah. late in August, lots of rain came, and the muskegs filled back up. That all got put out. Yeah. And that was a, a good thing, but it continued to burn right through the winter up yep. on the ridges. Yeah. And what um, happened there is you've got these clay ridges, the, the base uh, of them all are clay, and you know, they, they're they covered with, mostly with hardwoods, uh, poplar. Mm -hmm. And so you have how many centuries of, of uh, their leaves and everything falling down, and it becomes a duff. You know, it's that loam that's on top of the clay. Yeah. And, it, you know, that thick or that thick, however thick it is, but it, the fire starts that and it just keeps creeping and eating, creeping and eating. And because you have these ridges, while well, it'll creep and eat its way up the ridge. And it went through the whole winter that way. Yeah, it did. We had, we had encountered several places where, where, you know, this slow burn was going on and we let the, the folks at Alberta Wildfires know about it. but. They, at that point in the year, they have no budget. So it was sort of like, well, I guess if a big wind flares up and it starts to burn again, then we'll, then we'll put some resources on it. But otherwise they, they just didn't have a lot to, yeah. to do with it. But, you know, we we felt that we were pretty lucky in that regard. Um, Cause even around Grand Prairie and some good friends of ours had lost their home in the Wapiti River Valley, which is south of us. Um, and several other people did as well. It just, it was a bad situation. There were lots of homes lost at Sturgeon Lake, um, on the north side of the lake there. Uh, a lot of vacation homes and things like that. And a lot of people's regular residences were lost. So yep. Yep. for a but lot of things, we were very fortunate that. But once again, it wasn't, it isn't climate change like they all want to blame. Yeah. It was uh, just, the conditions, you know, I mean, everything's cycle. This year we had even less snow through the winter. Yeah. And yet we had rain when spring came. And so yeah. everything was fine, you know. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we have a nice normal winter. That'd be nice to get back to some normal winter. Yeah. But, um, you know, the homesteading kind of picked up. So last summer, um, a friend of ours had bought a piece of property on a, um, I don't know, it's probably about an hour's drive from here and uh, said there was a, a chicken coop in the, on the property, you know, would we like it? That's going to be a tale for another day. Is it? We're getting a flashing light here. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, a tale for another day. We'll keep you in suspense because, you know, there's, there's a lot to tell you. A lot has happened over the a last lot. year and a half, and um, we want to fill you in on it all, but we can't do it in one sitting, so we'll tell you another tale later. Get, get this up soon. I, uh, Hope you've enjoyed our, our podcast and uh, check out our, our, our show. Check out uh, our online uh, um, community. Community. That's the word I was looking for. At locals.com. So trapping inc. Dot locals.com. Yep. And yep. Uh, there's, we post a lot of videos and pictures and stories on there. And we would really encourage you to stay connected with us because we, we do feel the pull back into our trapping community and everyone else that follows us. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you down the line.